months. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to jail. He literally was telling me that I was going to jail. He was asking me to go to, go to Target and wire money to him and I almost did it. Hello everyone. If you are a new freelancer and you're anything like I was when I first started out, you are above all things stressed out about the whole tax situation. So today I'm going to answer some common questions that I get about freelance taxes and really share everything that I know about paying taxes and getting write-offs and quarterly taxes and all of that. Now, I do have to give the disclaimer that of course, I am not a tax professional, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a lawyer, I'm none of those things, so be sure to consult yours just as a double check. All of this information I'm gonna be sharing is purely anecdotal, but hopefully at least gives you a good idea of what other people are doing and gets you started in the right direction. I also wanna take a second to thank today's sponsor, which is Indie. Indie is banking for the self-employed. It's a new type of business card that allows you to make business purchases and write them off and even pay your taxes and monitor how much tax you're owing throughout the year. It's actually iconic. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for a tool and a product like this to come out for a very long time because as I'll, I'll explain later on in the episode, it's actually quite confusing to estimate your taxes and pay your taxes. This is whole process. So I um, recently got my Indie card in the mail. It's a regular MasterCard debit card. So it works just like any other debit card that you have. You can use it to you know, pay for purchases, order things online, but it also acts as an account that kind of splits things up for you. So if I get $200 into my account, it's gonna take my projected income and it's automatically gonna save a little piece of that $200 invoice into a separate account for my taxes. Then when it comes time to actually pay my taxes, it allows me to just tap a couple of buttons and it sends that money off to the IRS for me. So it's a lot less complicated than what I was previously doing and I'll talk about kind of all of that in this, in this video. All right, so first things first, what makes freelance taxes so much more complicated and different than regular taxes? Okay, so basically when you are a full-time employee, you, when you're getting a paycheck, or even if you're a part-time employee, if you get a paycheck or a direct deposit from an employer, they take out taxes for you. You know, if you have a $60,000 salary, let's say, you're not actually taking home $60,000. You're taking home, you know, 40 something or whatever the math is going to be because the rest is automatically getting sent to tax. Now, as a freelancer, that does not happen. So if I send an invoice for $5,000, there's no tax taken out of that. I get $5,000 in my account, minus a little bit of transaction fees if you use PayPal or Wave or something like that. But for the most part, you're getting about $5,000 into your account. Now that sounds really cool and it kind of is, but you know, you do have to be careful about it because you have to, at the end of the year, or every quarter, and I'm gonna explain the difference. Let me get comfortable for this because this is gonna be, I have a feeling, a quite a long video. You will actually be responsible for that tax liability. So why should you pay taxes? That's another question I get. If you wanna think selfishly, which is totally understandable, you should pay taxes because you will get in trouble if you don't. I have heard plenty of horror stories and even me myself, I've always, always, always paid taxes. Even if it was just a side hustle income, I always reported it, but I have made a couple of very small mistakes and they have caught them and they have been like, where is our money? I actually, this past tax season, I got a bill from the city for I think it was $11. So like they are on top of stuff. If you're making mistakes or if you're under reporting, they have their ways of finding out. Even companies like PayPal are required to report transactions and income and stuff like that into the IRS. So if you're you know accepting $100,000 through PayPal every year and you're not reporting that, you're probably going to get a certified letter from the IRS and that is not a good feeling. Now, another reason you want to pay taxes is because as a freelancer, that is how you verify your income. And so for any type of thing, like a mortgage, like an apartment, even like um, a business, a brick and mortar location for your business, 
you need to be able to prove that you actually made money. Now, I am not a homeowner yet, but I do rent and I have actually went through the application process for a brick and mortar. I didn't go through with it, thank goodness, because of COVID, but I did get approved for a commercial space as well. And both of those, you know, rental situations have asked for tax returns since I don't have a W-2 to show them. Um, I don't have a pay stub. That's normally what you give when you you know, rent or when you have a mortgage. And as far as I understand, most mortgages want you to have two to three years of tax returns that are good and profitable before they will give you a mortgage. So these are all things to keep in mind selfishly. And then again, of course, it's like the right thing to do, roads, schools, all that good stuff. Okay, now you might be wondering, I mentioned end of year and I mentioned quarterly taxes. So you are expected to pay quarterly taxes if you owe over a thousand dollars in the tax year. So for most freelancers, that's gonna be us. Most of us, you know, if we're profitable in our businesses, we are going to be expected to make quarterly tax payments. And even some people with W-2 employment do have to make quarterly tax payments. I did, because I was making enough from my side hustle that it pushed me into that category. Now, here's the big question, and here's where Indy comes in as a major lifesaver. How do you know if you owe $1,000 or more? Awesome question, right? So the old school way is to look at your tax bracket and just pay attention to your income, monitor your income, and set aside a certain amount every invoice you get. So you can look up on the IRS, they, they should have on their website tax brackets, meaning you know if you make $50,000 a year, this is how much tax you pay if you make 60,000, you know, et cetera. Find your estimated income and figure out, okay, my tax rate is 20, 20%, so I'm gonna save 20% from all my invoices. Now, that's kind of similar to what Indie does because what they do is if you, if you set up your Indie bank account as your receiving bank account for your business, you're gonna get an invoice. Again, let's say it's a $5,000 invoice and they're automatically based on the tax information that you've put in when you set up your account, they're going to set aside a certain amount of that into your tax account for you. So it really takes the guesswork out of how, you know, should I save 20%, 30%, 40%, what should I save? Indy is doing it for you. And then again, when it comes to the quarterly tax periods, which I'll put up on the screen here, they're four times every year. This year's a little weird because of COVID, there was an extension, but normally it's January, April, September, and I'm messing it up here. I'm gonna put it right up on the screen. I don't know why that's so hard, hard for me to think about. But anyway, you can go ahead and you can pay it through the IRS's website. I'm pretty sure I just have it bookmarked, but you can just Google pay quarterly tax estimates online IRS, make sure it's like the legit IRS site. And that's why I pay my, my taxes every year or every quarter rather, but Indy can do it for you as well. So if you have this Indy account, they will be able to uh, say, oh, quarterly taxes are due. Do you want to use this balance to pay? And then you click it and then they pay it for you, which is so amazing. And while I'm talking about this also, I wanna say having a separate business bank account, whether it's Indie or just a, you know, you're opening another account at your regular old bank that you use, having a separate business bank account is so important. And I would say that this is like number one thing that you should do when you start a business and when you actually start being profitable because it makes all of these transactions so much less difficult to sort through if it's coming out of just one account and then your expenses are coming out of that same account, you only have to look at that bank statement. You don't gotta look at all your credit cards, all your debit cards and sort through your Chipotle purchases, your shoes that you bought. And you know, having all these questions about what was this? You know, did this count as a business expense? All of that, you do not have to worry about that uh, if you have a separate account. So definitely set up a separate account regardless of who you go with, it will make your life a lot easier come tax time. Now I mentioned expenses there. This is another question that I get a lot is what is a business expense? How does it like affect my taxes? What qualifies as a business expense? How do I write those off, etc. So buckle yourselves in. <laughs> okay. So basically a business expense is 
exactly what it sounds like. It's pretty self-explanatory, right? It's an expense, it's something that you pay for to run your business. So an example of a business expense is a computer or a camera, right? I have to have a camera to do my job. It's a normal and ordinary business expense, meaning if I am a photographer or a um, content creator, a social media content creator like I am, it's kind of hard to create content without a camera, right? So it, it, it's a reasonable expense to have. Now, if I were to be hired at a company to be their content creator or their videographer or their photographer, they would be responsible for providing me with the equipment to do my job you know, appropriately and, and reasonably. So that's why I'm able to write it off because if I was a normal employee, it would be provided for me. But since I own a business, I have to provide it for myself. So you get a little bit of a tax break. Now, here is an area, and I did a podcast that goes way more in detail about this. So I'm gonna link that down below because this might, if you're into this stuff, you'll really like that one too, I hope. But this is where a lot of people get hung up. A lot of people think, okay, my camera was, I don't know, $800 or whatever. Let's say I owe $5,000 in taxes this quarter. My camera was 800. So that means that I owe $4,200 in taxes. Wrong. <laughs> That's actually not correct. What a business expense does is it will say, okay, you earned $20,000 this quarter or whatever. These numbers are all clearly made up. You earned $20,000 this quarter. Your, your camera cost you 800. So we're going to remove the 800 from your taxable income. So we're going to tax based off of 19,200 as opposed to 20,000. So that's the amount you're going to be taxed on. That doesn't mean that it's a dollar for dollar tax savings. I know it's a little complicated. I'm not a math person. So sometimes I have to like really think through that. But my point is don't just buy a bunch of business expenses so that you owe zero in taxes because it's still money you're spending, number one. And also the other thing about that is that you don't want your profit to be flat. Like you don't wanna have made nothing because you expensed everything. Because again, going back to mortgages, business, you know, rentals, anything like that, it's gonna say that you made zero dollars and like, that's not good. You wanna have a profitable business. So it is a good thing. Like you should want to owe a little bit of tax. In my opinion, again, I'm not a tax expert. This is not tax advice, but I don't want to be flat and I definitely don't wanna be in the negative and getting a return. Now, another question is what qualifies as a business expense? So again, Indy is great at this. If I go to Best Buy, let's say, and I, buy something at Best Buy. Indy knows that is an electronic store. So they're gonna ask me, hey, what did you buy at Best Buy? Was this a business expense? Did you buy this keyboard for your business or this camera or this SD card or whatever it is? And they're automatically gonna factor that into that amount that it's telling me that they're setting aside for taxes. It's like magic. Like it's all of these calculations that you have to do in your head normally. They do it, you know, all in the card, which is really great. Now, of course, I definitely recommend that you double check these things. You can bring all these statements and stuff to your accountant as well when you do your end of the year taxes, just to make sure, but for you know the regular day-to-day -day tax write-offs and all of that, like it makes it so much easier to deal with and to process. So let me tell you about some of my favorite business expenses uh, and some of the questions that I get often. So travel. Often people ask me, hey, do you get to write off your travel when you, you know, in normal times, I used to travel quite a bit and people would always ask, is that a business expense? Is that a business trip? And sometimes is the answer. Now, in order to actually count your travel expenses as a business expense, it needs to be for business. So an example, a lot of people thought that my trip to Paris was a business expense. Absolutely not. That was a vacation. We paid for that with our own money. We did not expense anything of that. That was a vacation because we went for fun. We did end up meeting up with one of my clients, but I didn't go there to meet up with my client. It just happened to be something that we did for part of the trip. But when I went to Boston last year for, um, what was the, hy hypergrowth, hypergrowth. I went to a com conference last year in Boston. That trip was written off because I went for a conference and met with clients out there as well. So if you're going for business purposes, you can write off your travel, your, you know, your flight, your hotel, your Uber, your food while you're there. Food has a little bit of an exception. I think it's only 50% write off. You can double check. And again, Indy would have you covered there. They know better than I do, but yeah, you can write all that stuff off. Now, the thing with that as well is that it has to be a normal and ordinary expense. I'm not going to fly to some like 
lavish, luxurious, you know, $10,000 a night hotel in this like tropical location, go to the spa and like order room service, like that's not normal and ordinary, right? So it needs to be on the same level as your business. So like when I went to Boston, I flew coach, I stayed in a normal hotel. You know, it's a nice hotel, but it wasn't a $10,000 a night hotel, okay? So make sure that you are being normal and reasonable. Similarly, I don't think it counts as being normal and reasonable if you, you know, your client lives in LA and you're flying to see them like every week. I mean, you know, you gotta condense those trips. It's okay if you see them once or twice, but you can't go see them like all the time. And again, you gotta be mindful of the fact that that is going to bring your profit way down. If you're flying out to LA every week, you're gonna end up with no profit. Another thing that you can write off, of course, I've been talking about this a little bit, is equipment. Another thing that you can write off is professional services. So if I hire a coach, if I go to an educational type class or conference or event, like a mastermind, kind of live mastermind or retreat or something like that, that is education. Again, like I said, professional services, so a coach. You can do contract labor, is, is you can write that off. So if I hire someone on Upwork or I just hire another freelancer, the money that I'm paying them gets removed or gets deducted from my taxable income. So again, while I am not I, I, it's not dollar for dollar. It doesn't mean, oh, I paid my contractor $2,000 this month, so I don't owe that in taxes. It does help with your tax liability a little bit. And my thought process is like, if I would pay for it anyway, it is a good thing because it's going to be reducing my tax liability. But if I wasn't gonna purchase it anyway, don't purchase it just for the tax thing, right? So if you're thinking about hiring a coach, it can give you a little bit of peace of mind that that is something that I can write off, but don't hire a coach just to have something to write off. Does that make sense? Like do it because you want to do it and then think of it as a little bit of a bonus and kind of softens the blow of some of these purchases I need to make because running a business is expensive. So for me, those are some of my most common business expenses. Of course, we have you know paper, notebooks, pens, all that day-to-day -day kind of stuff definitely you should write those off as well. And don't discredit those because I mean, honestly, I'm like pens, I don't buy pens. And then every year at the end of the year, I'm like, oh my gosh, I spent $50 on pens. And so that's $50 that can be deducted from your taxable income and can really help you out down the line. Now, the last question that I wanna answer about taxes is, well, what happens if I make a mistake? Well, first of all, actually, before I answer this, I wanna say that Indy has a bunch of amazing guides on their website, which I was reading through before I did this video and I was getting kind of lost in because there were so many good resources. So check out their guides as well if you have questions about anything that I didn't cover today because I think that they did mention this on there somewhere. But people are gonna make mistakes, right? Like I said, I made a mistake on my city taxes. And actually, before I, I answer that question, I do pay city taxes. Most people do not though. Most people don't pay city taxes. There's only a few cities really, I think in the country that do. Now, of course, if you're international, I don't really know about that, unfortunately, but most cities in the US do not have to pay city taxes. I do, unfortunately. And then you have state taxes. So those are separate. What I'm talking about in this video are IRS, Internal Revenue Service, the Fed, the feds. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm talking about in this video. Um, so I always do save closer to that 30 or 40% mark just to account for all of those taxes personally. But if you don't have to pay city taxes or if you are making a little bit less money and you're not within a tax bracket that's really high, you can probably get away with a little bit less. But again, you know, use, use some kind of tracking system, whether it's indie or whether it's just a spreadsheet. So you are keeping track of how much you're making and that you're saving enough. Now, the question is what happens if I make a mistake? Well, the first thing I would say is don't panic. Knock on wood, I have not ever made a mistake that required some kind of big scary letter, if you know what I mean. I haven't made any mistakes like that. I've made small mistakes. I actually, this year, I got a check from the IRS, which terrified me because I definitely thought I was in trouble when I got that letter from the IRS and they ended up sending me a $2,000 check. So I made a big mistake, but it was, I'd rather overpay than underpay. So if you overpay, they will refund you, which is kind of cool to know. Like. 
definitely cool to know. And similarly, if you underpay, they're going to send you a certified letter. Do not believe the phone scams. This is like a whole other story time. Maybe I'll tell you guys about it in an, another video, but I almost fell for one of those one time when I was very new in my business. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to jail. He literally was telling me that I was going to jail. He was asking me to go to, go to Target and wire money to him and I almost did it. So do not do that. The IRS will send you a certified letter, certified. If you are being audited or if you made a mistake and they need you to look at something. So make sure that you're retaining all of your receipts, all of your uh, tax payment, your quarterly tax payment receipts. Make sure that you maintain those. I keep them in a locked cabinet and then I also keep them digitally saved as well, just in case something happened to either one of those things. So that just in case you do need to look at anything, but above all, you know, don't panic. It's a mistake. I see stories all the time about, you know, celebrities and famous people who owe like 70, 80, 90, you know, thousand or million dollars in taxes. Like if they're doing that, you're probably okay if you underpaid by $5. They're just gonna ask you to mail a check-in. So just stay calm, keep your records of everything, and if you make a mistake, just pay it. And you know that's why I always recommend having an emergency fund as well, so that in case you do miscalculate or you need to end up paying a little bit more, you're not taken aback and you have nowhere to um, source that money from. All right, so I hope that this video was helpful. Again, definitely you know check with a tax professional if you have any additional questions, or you can also, check out Indie. I love my card. That's why I keep showing it. It's super cute. Um, yeah, you can check out Indie.app is where you can find them. I'll leave the direct link down below. Seriously, you guys, such a game changer. I am using this really, really for my business expenses now. It's coming so in handy and it's just like a brilliant tool that I genuinely think would have saved me a lot of headaches and lost nights of sleep if I would have had when I first started out as a freelancer. So definitely get your card down below. And thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit me up on Instagram if you want to get a first look at new content coming up and hang out with me and chat with me. And yeah, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.